Hi everyone, again. Guess what? Another art haul. 24 hours after breaking my I'm not going to do any art haul videos, I did an art haul yesterday and I'm doing another one today. The reason is that my local art store, which is a little art store, privately run, it's run by a really, really, really smart guy who's a good business person and he employs loads of people who are mainly artists and art students in the city because we have a really big art college here and they work there so they really know their stuff and it's a really, really good shop. That's the art side in Plymouth and I just want to give them a little shout out because they're a really good store. Anyway, they seem to have everything on discount at the moment, like loads of stuff is discounted. And yesterday when I did my big haul, I bought a lot of items. And when I bought them, I was at the queue, there was like one girl on the counter, there was a queue forming behind me. And she was having to manually enter all the different discounts into the till, it was taking her quite a long time. I was checking receipts last night, turned out they'd made a few mistakes. They double charged me for one item. And they had charged me for not only the wrong size phone call, they charged me for like the bigger size. They'd also charged me the non-discounted price. So I went in today and they sorted it out straight away and it meant they owed me like £4.90 or something like that. So I went to the shelves, found something I immediately wanted, which I'm going to tell you about in a second. Went to pay for it, which meant I had to pay them like 10 pence or something like that. But there's a minimum £5 charge on a card. So what a pity I had to get a few more items. So you'll remember yesterday I bought from the big box craft store, not the little craft store. I bought these Derwent Colour Soft and Watercolour pencils. And these worked out per pencil, about 50 pence. And these are admittedly, I think, quite heavily discounted um, because of the sort of pack size that they're in. When you buy them as open stock, they tend to be a lot more. Well... My local art, stop ha local art shop has them all discounted at the moment, so I bought some of the Ink Tents line because I don't have any Ink Tents pencils at all and I thought they'd be good for review. I bought Red Oxide, Thistle, Poppy Red and one called Outliner, which um, I don't know an awful lot about, but I'm guessing it's just because it's boring grey and maybe it doesn't dissolve in water. I don't know. I'm going to try it out later. Come on, focus, you silly thing. There we go. So, outliner, red oxide, thistle, which is a beautiful purple. And, um, whatever that is, sorry, that's red oxide. That's thistle, that's poppy, and that's outliner. So I have some ink Inktense pencils. I have already got some ink Inktense blocks. I've got about five of them that, again, I've bought at various points just to kind of make the price up. And I've used them a bit, and I, I haven't done a lot with them, to be honest. Not because I don't like them, but just because I haven't really found a use for them. Um, it did come to me that maybe I should get these in the same colours that I have the blocks in, so I could compare them side by side. But I thought, no, buy something you're going to use, not something just for review, because you already don't like the blocks that much. You may not like the pencils, so don't just double up. So that means I'm going to be doing some Derwent reviews of Colour Soft, Watercolour, Ink Tense Pencil and Ink Tense Block. And I have also got a lot of other Derwent products because I really like their, their tinted charcoals and their pastel pencils. So I think I might do a really big Derwent product comparison series of videos coming up, which should be quite good fun. Anyway, the really cool item that I got, I was going through the paint looking for something that was about £5. And again, they had them discounted. And what was really cool is they had a little half pan of New Gamboge. Now, I have new gamboge already, but this is special new gamboge because this is old new gamboge. Now the cognoscenti will know exactly what I'm talking about already. Winter and Newton reformulated their new gamboge a couple of years ago and it's never been the same since. But this one is still the old nickel dioxide pigment yellow 153 new gamboge before they modified it and turned it into the crap new gamboge that they now produce. So I'm about to do a video of old new gamboge versus new new gamboge so that you can see the difference as I've been after some of this for ages and I'm really glad to have finally got hold of any. Sadly it was the last plot they had but I have told them if they see any more to look out for it for me. 
They're a really great art shop. If you're in the southwest area, they've always got really good discounts on items. So do go and visit them. They sadly don't have a website. A bit of a shame, but they are a good art store. And I do try my best to buy from them as much as I buy from the big box store. I tend to keep the big box store for things like paper because it's always cheaper in a bigger shop. More foot, more foot, more um, more floor space. That's that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, brushes I just get whenever they're discounted. And that brings me on to my other purchase. In yesterday's haul video, I told you I bought a beaker of Vaseline glass, which is a uranium containing glass that I wanted to keep my brushes in. And it was about the size of this copper beaker that I've been keeping my brushes in up until now. This is a copper plated, it's not copper on the inside, um, bathroom beaker for keeping toothbrushes in. But I bought it, I thought it was cute. I like natural materials, I like copper. I now have so many brushes, they're outgrowing it. So I took this beaker back to the antique market and I said to the guy, look, I bought this in good faith. I thought it was Vaseline glass, which is radioactive and it glows under ultraviolet light. But this is really not. It doesn't glow at all under UV and it's not radioactive. It's just green glass. Can I like give it back and get a refund? He said, oh, you can have your money back, £10. And I said, OK. If I find something else I want, can I part exchange it rather than you giving me cash? He said, oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. This is Parade Antiques, incidentally, which is a kind of weird antiques market in Plymouth where basically it has a load of um, of display cabinets with numbers, each of which is rented by a different stallholder, and then one central kind of cash register area. So you find what you want, you find the cabinet number, you go to the counter, you tell them what you want, you pay, and the money goes to the person who rents that cabinet, which I think is a really cool way for people um, to set up in that trade without needing to um, rent a whole booth and man it all the time. I don't know how their fees work out, but that seems like a good idea, and I wish they'd do the same with arts and crafts rather than just antiques. Anyway, I went back, I took my UV torch with me, as I thought I really should check what I buy next, and I took my Geiger counter and I found something that was radioactive, but it doesn't glow very well. And I knew immediately what it was. It's something called depression glass. So that's what I then bought. This is a depression glass um, jug, probably about 1930, made in the USA in the Great Depression. You can see it's this lovely yellow green. Let me just get the focus right. Beautiful yellow green, perfect for holding all my brushes. This is not all of them. I just want my watercolour brushes in this jug. I keep my acrylic and my oil brushes in a thing way over there at the back, right down there that you can barely see. But I like my watercolour brushes in one place. I can take them outside or to other rooms or wherever I want to paint. So I wanted something big and that would be able to take my collection because it's growing as I'm buying more and more larger brushes because I'm painting on much bigger paper these days than I used to when I only ever used to paint with small brushes. So um, I saw it, I loved it, and this is what it is. And what this is, is it is glass containing about 2% uranium oxide, but they also added iron oxide to it, which gives it a darker green than Vaseline. It doesn't fluoresce because the fluorescence is quenched by the iron, but it is radioactive. Uh, it's so unradioactive that, you know, it's no worse than a slab of granite or something like that, but you can tell um, that it is radioactive. So it's safe to handle. Personally, I wouldn't drink out of it, but I think it's beautiful and it's a nice addition to my studio because I like to have interesting objects. And if I can't have natural containers like I have, um, not here, but in my office at work, I have various candle holders which are big blocks of crystals with mineral crystals like rose quartz and quartz with holes drilled through and I keep pencils and pens and things in them and if I can't have that kind of container or recycled glass jars I like having kind of antique I, I have a thing with antiques that I like them to be functional so if I have an antique book I want to be able to read it not just look at it so I thought this was a cool way to have something and keep it and the other cool thing was this was 25 pounds and they gave it to me for 20 so I just paid £10 today because of my trouble and my hassle, which I thought was really sweet of them. They didn't have to do that, and I did actually kind of try and refuse it. But Parade Antiques are really good people in Plymouth. Do go there again if you want antiques. So two shout-outs for two shops that I really like. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.